Welcome to the live steam build of Charles, the pen ridden quarry engine. This is being built to 1 12th scale to run on gauge 1 or G gauge 45mm gauge track. Let's get stuck into the valve gear. I found Trevor Thompson's write up in Garden Rails forum very useful for terminology and layout. I'll put a link in the description. Dismantling the loco to drill the frames for the valve gear rocker bearing, one side at a time, using the smoke box as a counterweight. The frames lift off from the axle boxes when the keepers are unscrewed. The first frame in the vise. Hole drilled for tapping 730 seconds by 40 TPI. The hole is 0.2 inch from the top face and 3.720 inches from the front face. The thread has been tapped with the tap held in the three jaw, the chuck rotated by hand and the carriage manually traversed. Plenty of cutting oil used. Here's the rocker bearing. Brass 1 quarter inch AF hex. Head 1 8 inch long with 730 seconds threaded for just over 1 inch. Power threaded in the lathe with a die in the tailstock running at 200 rpm. Drill through 1 8 for the stainless shaft. Just part it off at 1 quarter inch filing button using a wire in the tailstock chuck down the bore so that I don't lose a piece amongst all the swarf. 1 8 steel outside rocker link using the new filing buttons on one end and 3 16 buttons on the other. I've just been filing the taper between them. This is to match the tapered appearance of those on Charles. I place the hole centers at 1 inch to make the knuckle link more in line. The drawing called for 0.8 inch. I made sketches for the knuckle and link pins. Turn from KNS 1 8 brass rod with a 2.2mm diameter plane section for the bearing surface. I went with a cheese head look in the end as I needed slotting for a screwdriver. That's the right side completed. The small link is from 1.6mm sheet and is 3 16 wide with 2.2mm holes drilled with half inch centers. The left side link blanks drilled and the larger one tapped 1 8 BSW and 8 BA with the filing buttons ready for filing to size. The small link blank is a quarter inch wide and use the same vertical slide setting as the larger link when drilling the holes. The large link is tapered from quarter inch down to three sixteenths. It was an hour or two of happy bench work. Starting on the eccentrics, I had some three quarter inch steel bar in stock, so I use this rather than get in something a little larger that I can turn a flange on. I'll have to add a plate later. Here's the whole bar in the chuck. I've just cut four grooves in to mark where I will be hacksawing. The eccentrics will be 3 16 wide. I'm using the OD of the bar. Hopefully the little pits will retain oil. Drilling for the reamed 5 16 axle holes. I clocked a 0.3 total indicator reading or 0.150 offset using the 3 quarter inch bar, then carefully removed it and inserted the blank. I wanted the piece to be fully inserted into the jaws. The setting remained near enough. Finished reamed, ready for hack sawing apart. I didn't want to waste material with my 1 8 wide parting tool, and the job is too extended from the chuck anyway. Two pieces sawn off. I didn't allow myself much margin for error, so I had to be very careful. After the first was cut, I faced off the blank, so each cut piece has one smooth face. Both pieces face to length on the gluing faceplate, held on with superglue. Only two thou cuts were taken and at 200 rpm. The central piece is also glued on. It's 1 8 thick. I use it to set the compound slide from as I didn't know what the glue thickness would be. A grub screw hole was drilled and tapped M3 in the vertical slide. I'm using flat faced grub screws. Another bar too far out from the chuck. This is a piece of now 0.990 inch diameter brass bar. I've just parted off two eccentric straps. A nice boring, light skim off the top and parting job. Straps in place. They will need retaining with plates on the outer edges of the eccentrics. But mainly I'm trying to mock up the valve gear at this stage. Eccentric rod slot milled 0.1 inch deep. It's a 0.120 inch wall section and 0.260 wide excluding the cutter radius. 
My 9 inch length of hand sawn and filed quarter inch wide 1.6mm thick eccentric rod is a little over width, as usual when filing to the line, it's always the case. This little 1.4mm diameter ball ended carbide cutter is belting along at 2150rpm. I was taking one thou full depth cuts to increase the width to 1.6mm. My screws order arrived from BA bolts. These took a while to arrive. They included some short, countersunk 8BA screws to finish attaching the brass angles to the base of the smoke box. Working on the eccentric strap rods. First job was to cut a strip of 1.6mm sheet and file it to quarter inch wide. Here's one end with a 3 16th thick, 3 8 piece of steel located with a rivet. It's loose, I'll true it up when brazing. Cooling down after silver brazing. The rivet is in the position of the pivot hole. The finished end, cross drilled and tapped 8BA on the crooked end, then milled with a large slitting saw to accept the one quarter inch thick expansion link. Then the radius was filed with the quarter inch buttons. Here's the other end, drilled and tapped, ready for milling. Here's the trial expansion link, scalloped so that the strap rods can travel enough from a scrap of steel 1 8 thick by half inch wide and 1 inch long, with the strap holes on 3 quarter inch centres to keep the movement to less than 25 degrees. Making two more sets of screws for the left hand cylinder valve rod and knuckle link. I've just sawn the screwdriver slot with the junior hacksaw, using the magnifier to get it as central as possible. Making the screw from my sketch. Using the 8BA nut to show me where the usable length of thread ends so that I can turn the 1 8 length. The screw is mostly complete. It just needs sawing off and facing off to a 1 16th head length. The plain portion is the bearing surface. The two finished screws, the 1.5mm spacer and the link for the left cylinder. It should have been 1.4mm actually, I had to remake it. That's the front end complete. Now I can get back on with expansion link. A new expansion link with a straight slot. I had to make the link wider to allow enough room so the extension rod wouldn't foul with the eccentric strap rods. Making the reversing arm, 1 inch centers using 0.3 inch and 3 16 filing buttons. Part the way through sawing off the flanks. This is 1 8 inch steel. That's one I prepared earlier. It's so nicely proportioned that I remade those at the cylinder end. I will reuse the old ones for the inside rockers. Making a start on the lifting arm, I marked the curved lines using those brass pieces. Holes drilled in the vertical slide for bosses to be brazed in. 3 8 and 1 quarter inch bosses. Half inch long, drilled 1 8 and the other tapped 8 BA. Fluxed up, ready for silver brazing. Cooling down. I put it in the citric acid when it was fully cool. Just over 5 minutes was enough to remove the flux. Finish file to shape, now in position. I drilled and tapped the large boss for M3 grub screws to secure it to the lifting shaft. I needed to braze 1 quarter inch bosses on the expansion link for the lifting arm to engage with. These are tapped 8BA. In position with screws in, so that I could measure the expansion link hanger centers dimension. I added 40 thou and it came out at 0.721 inch. Marked out and center punched on a remainder of the 1 quarter inch by 1.6 mil filed steel strip cut from sheet. The two pieces produced together. I used the first as a drilling jig for the second piece. Drill through 2.2 mil and ends filed with the quarter inch buttons both at the same time. In position, now to fit the reversing arm to the shaft. Extension rod mocked up with wire. Steel piece cut out using rod as template. The suspension arm holes have been drilled and reamed in the frames. Earlier holes filled and brazed and re-drilled to get the cutout equal about the axle. Previously it contacted the axle. The front hole was moved forwards 1mm to even out the valve travel. Thanks for watching.